Welcome back to Let's Play JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, Golden Wind. The first threat has been defeated. Now on to carry out the boss's plan. So I think it's this guy is, uh, what's this guy talking about? I think he's just basically saying even after me there's more deadlier opponents. Something like that. It's at this point he's said... Uh, I don't know, I don't understand Italian. It's at this point he's said... <laughs> yeah, he said that. Oh, no, I know what he said. I know what he was saying, you kept talking. Almost doesn't make it, It's almost kind of pointless to say it anymore. What he was saying was he was trying to get real close to Naranti because he knew Aerosmith was a long-range stand. Having gotten that close to him, he said, Finally, I've gotten within range, now I can harm you close up where I have the advantage. And yet Naranzi has still summoned Aerosmith at that range and finished him. And then he said that the more powerful yeah. people come after. You feel better now? A little. No, you don't. You're right. I feel like crap. Duh. And with that, the chapter ends. So on to chapter four. Now, as their first mission, if you will, the boss has ordered them not only to take Trish into custody and protect her, but to also to transport her to a location where the boss himself can pick her up. Now, they can't simply tell them where the boss is going to be, so they've hidden a computer disk somewhere, a CD, if you will, that has the information on it regarding the boss's location. Yeah, this is the key. Well, I mean, I know this isn't it, but the, what they're going towards at this point is to try and find that disk. All in all, it's just kind of chatter between a lot of them, but as you saw there, it was, uh, was it Formaccio? Formaccio? Who? The guy with moody blues. Abicho. Abicho. Who the crap am I thinking of? Oh, I'm thinking of the last guy we just saw. Abicho. Since Giorno has just entered, he's not terribly fond of Giorno, really not very trusting of him. He doesn't even want to reveal his stand to, to uh, Giorno. Yeah, he's about to send these three off to Pompeii to get a key that the boss has just sent them an email about. And they're floating in the air. Because they're cool and can do that. With the greatest of ease. What's this key for, anyway? For a Coco Jumbo? Oh, right, yeah. You'll learn about that in a bit, folks. All you need to know at the moment is that the key is rather important. About what, but what is this? Fugo's seen someone in the mirror. It's a man in the mirror. They look behind them, though, and there's... No one there. It's still a man in the mirror. I wonder what his stance name is. I don't know! That is so cooler in the manga. Yeah, much cooler in the manga. All in all, this game is pretty faithful to the manga the whole way through. But there's just levels of awesome that only the manga can actually get to. And their next opponent steps in. Illusio. With his stand, man in the mirror. That's his stand thing? God, I never would have guessed that. Really? And just for everybody who was wondering from part three, yes, 
Polnareff was right. There is a mirror world. <laughs> That's where Fugo is right now. God, I wish we could tell Polnareff later on. Yeah, he pulled Fugo into the mirror world here. Okay, the first secret factor is trying to activate your stand, and you realize you can't activate your stand. Also, the tough part about this Wait, is... Wait, you gotta run in front of the mirror. Oh yeah, the mirror. One thing kind of sucks about this one is that left and right are mirrored. Not up and yeah. down. Up looking and down are the same in the mirror. Looking left through the mirror. Shut up, Rosen. Looking through the mirror. He looks back into the normal world where you see his stand. So Fugo's been pulled into the mirror world, but his stand is out in the real world, lacking a user. That's because Lucio can do that. Yeah. He, can, he can pull whatever he wants into the mirror world. Dang it. See, another secret factor is running by any garbage can. Still got hit by that. And the last one is running by the broken mirror. And now I just gotta survive for the rest of the time. Yeah, without your stand, you really don't have much hope in beating this guy. You're just trapped for the moment. You see, there's a timer in the upper right corner. All you have to do is survive that long. And as Ogre was saying not long ago, the controls are mirrored. Left and right is mirrored anyway, which makes it kind of tricky to actually get Fugo to do what you want him to. Because you have to think, he's in a mirror. Up and down aren't going to be different because of a mirror. Only left and right are going to be different. Yeah. I, I think that guy's throwing mirror shards. Yeah, he's throwing mirror shards. Although it makes you wonder why Pompeii has so many mirrors. Yeah, really, why are there so many mirrors in this place? Granted, the guy probably brought a lot of them just to set up this ambush, but still, that's a lot of mirrors. And while barrel rolling, you'll see you are, for the most part, invincible. Right, until punch, yeah, right up until you get punched in the spawn. Two! One! Yay, I survived. The points are just for achievements and stuff you unlock. Yeah, once you beat the game, you unlock a lot of neat stuff you can go back and do. Play different fights with different characters. And honestly, I have no idea what he's talking about. I've given up trying to follow this in the manga. The game skips around so much that... Since it can't fit everything into the single game. Meanwhile, in the real world... Oh, the crow died. That's what it was. Wait, what now? Oh, that was a dead crow, remember? Purple Haze accidentally killed some crows with a virus. Right. And the shadow of yeah, it fell down yeah. in the mirror world. Fugo's, Fugo's stand is Purple Haze. Avi Cho was really afraid of this stand for a good reason. Because Purple Haze is honestly really, really powerful. Crazy powerful, yeah. We'll get back to that later, though. Fugo's ability, if you will, is his stand has capsules on the end of its fists. Six of them, one for... Yeah, in each of the knuckles. Yeah. Breaking one of them will release a virus that will kill anything it touches. In 30 seconds. Yep. Really painful and nasty. And Abicho's reaction in the manga was terrifying. He actually saw Purple Haze and he told Jorno to come over and get him and everything. Come over to him because... Yeah, just get the crap out of here, we're leaving right now. But right now they're arguing over what they should do. Abicho wants to get the key and complete the mission. Jorno wants to help Fugo and protect his... I don't want to say friend exactly, but... Yeah, his teammate. Yeah, his well. associate. So Abaccio has essentially taken off on his own, saying, if I'm 
Yeah, I'm going to complete the mission whether you want to help me or not. Of course, that turns out to be a bad part. Yeah. In a second, when you see it. Kinda bad move on his part. Yep, that's a mirror. Yeah, mirrors generally a bad thing right now. And what's this? Why can I see his reflection in the mirror, but I, he, he's not actually in the room? And with that, he pulls him into the mirror world. And we're just about out of time. So, next time, everyone.